Hi, I'm Ken Lewis with Tomasi Studios. Just a quick tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to wire up a circuit board to a big machine that hopefully you're custom building to an electric motor. So, if you've never messed with one of these before, the good news is everything in here is very, very clearly marked. And with one exception, you literally just have to follow the instructions on the circuit board itself. So, uh, these circuit boards, they're really not dangerous to you. It's a DC motor. Getting zapped is going to hurt, but you won't die, presumably. But the, uh, the circuit boards themselves break, and they break easy. It's like 45 bucks to replace them, so, so pay attention. This is my setup. I have small holes as I possibly can, and I have a, a wood underneath circuit board. That's really all you need to do to keep these uh, things safe. But I do blast it with an air compressor about once a week. So to hook up the motor, look where it says motor. I've never seen a circuit board that didn't have one of these. So you have your red and your black wire. The um, blue wires are mostly for fuses. Go to where it says red to the red, red wire black to the black wire and your motor is officially hooked up. So I love treadmill parts. This is the electrical plug for a treadmill that the circuit board actually came with. So uh, this guy actually comes with an on off switch and also everything's mounted. I ripped out the uh, little surge protector here because you honestly don't need it anymore. Take your black wire go black to black and now your on off switch is actually connected to your black wire so on your uh, actual circuit board go white to white and then go black to blue it's actually going to be marked blue on the circuit board but it's actually where the black wire goes now I've got my housing, now I've got my housing for my on off switch. So for safety, I've got a non-conductive wood surface here. And I know what you're wondering, what about this green wire? What about the ground? Well, I honestly don't use them. I just clip them. I'm not saying it ever happened to me. I mean, of course, naturally. Of course, this happened to a friend who lives in another state. But, uh, theoretically, maybe I left this green wire intact and it touched the center of the circuit board and ruined it. I mean, I mean obviously, that I would never, never, I mean, no, no, no. But seriously, just clip them. They're not useful in this capacity because you have massively simplified the overall effect of the machine. And finally, speed control. The main reason you want a treadmill motor, the main reason you want a DC motor is because you have speed control. AC motors are fine, they have a lot of power to them, but uh, with an AC motor, uh, unless it's a phase motor, it's on or off. Think like a dish and dishwasher or uh, some kind of a washing machine or dryer. You turn the machine on and it's on or off. With a DC motor, you can do a, a lot of fine tuning. Now I've actually got a, um, a knob that it came from a treadmill that I ripped up a while back, but a, an actual uh, knob control variable speed is I think 10, 15 bucks. Just look for a 15 volt meter knob control on eBay. So half these wires get ignored and half of them get used. These are from parts of the machine that are long sent to the scrapyard. You just need your red, black, and white controls. And the way you can actually tell them is that they are actually in their own segmented thing here. The reason I prefer uh, an actual physical manual control, that basically a knob, is uh, as opposed to the uh, push button controls that a treadmill just nor normally comes with most of the time, it's because that push button control, what you're going to do is you're going to push one, nothing's going to happen because the machine is not in a normal state. You're going to push two, nothing's going to happen. Three, it might turn on at that point. But if you have 
a manual turn control, you can turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. You're going to feel the little grooves in here. And it's going to eventually turn on when it wants to. But in this way, it's going to be a nice, smooth action. But assuming you have one, here's what you're going to do. These three wires are going to be in a, in a central housing. And it's going to be white, black, and red. And then right up here, it's going to say red, white, and black. Match the colors. Then, uh, obviously, you want to put this, all thing, this whole thing in some kind of a housing. But that is it. I'm going to fire up my generator, and I'm just going to show you that this is actually how it's done.